Disclaimer, I am a therapist, but I am not your therapist. Any discussions of mental health are strictly based on my clinical experiences or current understanding of the topic. Nothing in my videos should be taken as diagnosis, treatment, or formal services. Any scenarios constructed to elaborate on a topic or share an experience are hypothetical and should not be taken as identification with actual persons living or deceased. If you want to support the channel, you can donate at streamlabs.com slash transgirltherapist slash tip, or you can become a patron at patreon.com slash transgirltherapist. Hey everyone. So we're back again talking about distorted thinking, making our way through the list slowly but surely. And I do have another list after this that has a couple extra new ones. So we will be covering those as well. The one I want to talk about today is... Camera. There we go. The fallacy of fairness. You feel resentful because you think you know what's fair, but other people won't agree with you. Now, this one is tricky. The reason is, is that there are times you will be right. And as someone in chat already said, this can lead to the just world fallacy. For those who don't know, the just world fallacy is the belief that the world has some sort of karmic balance to it, whether that's God some kind of spiritual system like karma in the Hindu sense or in the sense of Buddha, Buddhist sense, um, or just the idea that like everybody, you know, gets what's coming to them. The reality is, is this isn't true. Um, one of the benefits of being a Zen practitioner, as well as someone who identifies as, as an existentialist on the best days and nihilist on the worst days is that by all rights, there is a way in which we tend to project our desire of fairness on the rest of the world. The problem is, is this can go into two ways. The, again, the just world fallacy, where we think the world is fair, which can lead to all sorts of horrible things. For example, demonizing poor people or, you know, believing rich people earned their money and got there. There's just demonstrable facts that that isn't the case. Um, you'll see people like Jordan B. Peterson use this idea. For example, when he'll sort of vaguely gesture at trans people talking about lobsters, the idea that the hierarchy is just because it's nature, that's a fallacy. But the idea is that there's this fairness in the way we sort of construct social engagement. The reality is there isn't. They're actually pretty damn arbitrary. And the fact is, is that we do these things out of just blind hatred. One who's here for the um, raid that we just dealt with earlier tonight is understands that. But where this comes about in relationships, the bigger issue is, is that you may have a sense of what is fair and let's say you're sitting around with friends or family, and let's assume these people are healthy and trustworthy. It's entirely possible that you may have a sense of something being fair, when in reality, from an objective stance, it may not be. Um, it could be that you think fair is you having more of something, or you could think fair is you having first choice of a particular thing, or getting to constantly choose all the games because you're at their, your house or something. There's a number of ways we can sort of create examples to this, but I think the fallacy of fairness is a big one because often I see this come up during triggers. Somebody is dealing with a situation, feeling upset, and then all of a sudden someone will make a statement and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they'll get really upset saying this is unfair. When in reality, what's not really fair, it's not really about fairness in that regard. What it's about is the emotion. Um, the Green Kachik said in chat, people want so bad to believe that people get what they deserve because they want to be able to avoid suffering by just making the right choices. But what is right for one person will not be right for another due to a variety of huge reasons. You know, one of my favorite quotes was Green Kachik in uh, World War Z, one of my favorite books of all time. I like the quote by one of the characters in it who says that Americans have this weird belief that good or the bad things don't happen to good people that really stuck with me because in reality this is absolutely like that that notion is absolutely one true baked into at least western culture but on the other hand it's just sort of very much the case we act as though our efforts are going to keep us from suffering and that doesn't mean we shouldn't work or shouldn't push ourselves to grow and heal and whatnot but there are no guarantees the actual amount of security in the world is pretty low. The idea that like everything's sort of just here via arbitrary distinction and because a number of factors are preventing it from kind of going to shit 
None of those are foolproof. Tiamat said this could also be ascribed to a certain extent to the impossibility of being completely objective and people mistake vacant beliefs that they could be so. Yes, I would actually say that this is also related to that. The idea that you can be objective, that you're being fair, when in, really, in reality there's still probably some level of like micro biases or views on which you are still putting some level of meaning. What is what comes up for you when you think about this one? Uh, think what you're saying. I heard about suffering. Um, I actually think about chronic illness. Um, a lot of cases, there's a lot of people that try to go, well, can't you just do this? Can't you just do that? Or try this or try that to somehow make this better. This, this idea that, like, if you just, uh, do the right thing and do enough stuff, then chronic illness will happen to you. Um, when in reality, illness is entirely unfair. It's not something you can control. There is no, like, system to it. A lot of stuff we just don't even know about. Um, does that kind of make sense? No, I think it makes a lot of sense. Um... Yeah, I think about this a lot with migraines where people go, you know, have you tried uh, this oil or that random thing or this thing? Well, and and on one level they're trying to help, but there's a level to which it can also turn into this thing where like they're almost trying to shut down the conversation or shut down the illness. Yeah. I think yeah. people have a natural aversion to wanting to hear people suffer. And so what they do is they try to fix it, which seems like it's the good thing to do to the other person. But it also and inadvertently, I think, can be very invalidating. Um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and there's also times where I think where people don't. It, they think they really do think that you can just do more, right? I've definitely seen that happen. Yeah, life isn't fair, so why should I bother being kind? Yeah, and then that can get into a fallacy of nature and what. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Green Chief. You're so welcome. Yeah, I mean, you have more on the chronic illness part. Yeah, I was just gonna say is like, so the problem is this can go both ways. It's not just the people trying to help you, but it can also turn into again the just world part, where it's like, oh yeah, like yeah, like just world fallacy falls apart the moment we start talking about disabled people or chronically ill people or whatnot, because the idea is, is that these people in often cases are this way because of accidents or freaks of genetics or whatever thing led them to be in that position. And all of a sudden, this idea that this person deserved this, like the only way you can actually justify these horrific things these people go through, whether it's fibromyalgia or fucking Crohn's disease or the migraines me and Xena suffer. The only way you can use just world fallacy in that regard is you have to start going into some esoteric spiritual bullshit for it. Oh, you must have done something in your past life or, you know, maybe this has gotten new. You can handle this. Fuck God. Yeah, the number of times I've heard that uh, for like stuff too, that, that one gets rough. Oh, God, yeah, no, people who are victims of abuse will say shit like this, too. No, no, people will say that to me as part of, as, an, as a victim of, like, abuse in my teen years. I would get told, well, God, you know, knew you could handle this. What? That's a that's justifiable reason to tell a kid that? What? Well, I was going to say that that's the thing is, like, I think the fa fallacy of fairness is, like, this can go the other direction, too, where it's yeah. like, what if, like, you have a domestic abuse victim who... I could take him. Matt. Um, on my face. Can you grab me a tissue? Yeah. Tia Bat maybe laugh so hard I had snot shoot out of my face. We're eating spicy food before. That's true. So. Um, but I do think we're kind of getting to a thing where internally being a person with chronic illness, watching out for this one too, right? Not internalizing your chronic illness is something that you have done or you have deserved. Yeah, yeah, whether it's your disability, your mental illness, yeah. your chronic illness, the idea that this thing is something that you, that is, that marks you as negative, this actually goes into the productivity discussion too. Mm -hmm. As we've talked about before, the idea, as we've said uh, elsewhere here, that your, like, your value is somehow connected to your, your productivity also gets into the thing of fairness. It gets right back into the Protestant work ethic. Let's see. The Green Kachik, I also live with chronic illness, and I struggle so much to be seen as worthwhile, even though I'm not able to constantly perform. Even people who care about me treat me with disdain, treat my mobile, mobility aids with stigma. 
trying to push me to use them less instead of seeing them as free, as freeing tools that allow me to live independently and expecting me to improve on a straight line trajectory or I'm not trying hard enough when my predict yeah and it's so hard because the mind goes that natural way I'm not justifying those people's views but I can see how people get to that idea you could take them but would you want to deal with the almost invariable about a disastrous fallout? I this, mean, this was referring to the interaction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, um, and I'll say that is, is, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, Medusa got, uh, Medusa was, Medusa got fucked. I'm gonna say that real quick. Side note, read that myth. It's horrifying. Um, uh, challenge accepted may not be the best thing to say to messing with deities, but anyway. I mean, Zeus wasn't going to ask for permission anyway. Let's be I mean, super clear. That is anyway. Um, People don't really have the ability to fully understand the ramifications of a degenerative illness, in my in in my experience. Super fucking true. Yeah. Oh, well, the green cheek. I, I feel that like. Right, Mister Midnight. It almost feels like a challenge. Um. Mm -hmm. Anyway, enough of God fucking. But I still think Schubert right, Schubert Two is correct. I think part of this is like not being able to be in the other person's shoes. If we're talking about the thing of fairness, where, like. Well, I don't have any chronic illnesses. I don't have any disabilities. See, the world is fair. And then you meet someone who has it. And now your worldview is shattered. And on top of it, you can't quite understand what that person's ever been like. And so people tend to go one of two ways. They either try to ask questions, which sometimes are appropriate, sometimes are not. This happens to trans people as well. Or they immediately start to think you're either faking it or that you don't actually have that problem. Or in the course of trans people, just disbelieve your gender. There's a way that people sort of have this visceral reaction of either wanting to know or understanding how these things work, or they want to get rid of it, destroy it, whatnot. This has a lot to do with, you know, shit such as disgust as an emotion and people's level of sensitivity to it. We've talked about that before. So, yeah, I mean, the reason I wanted to bring up the fallacy of fairness is particularly because there's so many ways in which this is a thing. Yeah, it isn't happening to me, therefore it doesn't exist. Exactly, Ash. I think this is really important to recognize because, again, if you're in a situation where either you're in power and thinking that what you're doing is fair when in reality it's not, or the idea that you can be objective, or the idea that the world is fair somehow, these things are absolute nonsense. And we have to be willing to hear critique on them, we have to be willing to hear criticism on them, or we have to be willing to acknowledge the fact that the world isn't fair. Bad things really do happen to good people. It really sucks. I know tons of people who have been fucked by this. Concept mirror to NIMBY. I'm not familiar with that acronym. Can you can you explain that to you, Matt? Not in my backyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poverty doesn't. Got it. Yeah, yeah. There's there's many cities in the area. Out of sight, out of mind. Not in my backyard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the idea is like you'll have very progressive cities that seem like they're very queer friendly, very POC friendly. But you'll notice they have no low-income housing because the not in my backyard motherfuckers don't want to lower property values because technically, even though it's a progressive city, they want to make sure everyone's paying top fucking dollar. Yeah. Poverty doesn't happen if you're not looking at it. Same thing with homeless people. You can make the argument that that happens as well. People go out of sight, out of mind as far as homeless people. You know, instead of having them there and giving them spaces in the city or in you know well trafficked areas areas and making sure that they're okay making sure that like we're actually having people advocate for them no instead we try to force them underground force them out we go into their fucking shanty towns and destroy them no no the way homeless people are treated is just gross there's a debate vosh had with one such guy who basically was dancing around the idea that he thought that you know all of these homeless town little homeless towns were problematic and it really just got down to the fact that he was disgusted by homeless people and didn't want them to exist Super two towns will get buses to bus homeless people to other towns, but not use the same resources to make shelters or resources. True. Uh, the green Kachik said the people also blame the poor for making bad choices without seeing the forces that made those choices. Uh, ergo, if you don't experience the unfairness, it's not real. Yeah. Yeah. Like you pretend it's not real. And then on the question of the bad choices with poor people, this is absolutely a thing because it's again, we will give like people who are middle class or upper class will give, people in the same class as them, the benefit of the doubt. But if you are somebody who is poor, well, you must have done things to get there, right? Even if you're doing the same things as the poor people you're condemning, that's some weird shit I've seen. Well, maybe you shouldn't go and smoke so much pot, said the person who runs a fucking pot dispensary. Like, 
there are ways in which this stuff is very much systemic and real. And I think it's important for us to recognize that. Fun time uh, uh, talking to people about the, or people making bad choices or other groups making bad choices things. Because as soon as you start like bringing up all the nuance and the systemic stuff and all of that and the, the pure lack of resources like oh all the time, it just starts falling apart so quickly and suddenly you know, they either one gets doubled down, or two, they suddenly end up on your side, and you're like, do you get it now that, like, the stuff isn't just black and white here? Yeah, let me, can I give an example of yeah. a fallacy of fairness that's super good? Like, so back when I was an undergrad, I took a class called The Psychology of Women, and what it talked about was the way in which women deal with certain things that obviously men don't right feeling unsafe on the street or ways in which like women still get paid less. Like it covered a lot of very basic and, and fairly in-depth social and, and psychological facts, facets that affect women. There was a girl that stood up and you know, I'm gonna be a little spicy here. This dumb bitch spoke up, stood, stood up and said, well, I don't understand why we need feminism now. I grew up and look at me, I'm just as equal as any of the guys and I don't have any, I, I don't have these problems to which I'm thinking in the back of my head. The reason you're even in this fucking class is because people fought to be able to do that. The fact that you can vote is because someone did that. Like this is something that like was created for you, but because you don't experience these negative things, what ends up happening is almost a, a idiotic level of, just sheer lack of knowledge. Yeah, sample size of one. Yes. I mean, like, again, well, I don't experience sexism, said the girl who's like, again, interact, like interacting in a way where it's very clear she has no knowledge or awareness of what these things mean. I used to be that person as a teen. I'm so sorry. I'm just so, so sorry. Okay, but like, you were also a teen. Like, I'm... <laughs> I know you've grown since then. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I almost, if it hadn't been the fact I was growing up poor and my mom like yelled at me to be a Democrat and then, you know, after she died, I turned into a leftist. Um, I, um, yeah, I very much based on my weird, my way, my ethics were sitting could have easily gone like right leading libertarian when I was younger. Thank God I had people around me that stopped that shit from happening. Hanging Wednesday would have beat me to death and he would have been right to do so. Like I'm a, I'm a STEM and I've never met a woman who hasn't experienced some support of say for real, right? Pick me support group. A pick me support group here. I did it. I did this. Brittany, no, I'm all, I'm all for a pick me support group. We'll put it in Euclid. So no, STEM stuff is real hard. Well, and you've actually done classes on, you've actually done classes at various cons about like women in tech and stuff like that. And like, oh, that's a fun one. I've done that one with two other can women you imagine, as well. Can you imagine men in fucking tech being like, yo, this is all fair. And when it's like, you know, guys have fucking bikini models up in their fucking offices and crazy shit like that. No, there was one lady, uh, one friend. I love her story because she went, she, this is like 3 a.m. She's, you know, an engineer for one of the big networking things. Um, and she shows up to take care of the system at like 3 a.m. There's no one else around. Okay. And she gets there and the guy, you know, at the company looks at her and goes, hey, have you seen the repair guy yet? And she's like, it's me. It's 3 a.m. No one around. Like, holy shit. The sexism <laughs> is fucking real. So, no, Maroon Tire, that's, that's very much like, yeah, well, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Well, and again, it's like, it's the people who are like, I worked so hard for this, ignoring the fact that they're white and had wealth passed down to them and that they were cis and het and they had nothing in their way. And that's not to reduce the things they've been through. I've worked with clients like that. It's not to say they haven't dealt with real pains and real struggles, but this nonsensical idea that they had like, that, that your experience is the same as like mine. Was anyone here for the fucking raid? Like what? Excuse me. Excuse me. What gaming YouTuber 
do you see on a regular basis get that shit? You don't see people like spamming fucking shit in like Markiplier's chats on Twitch. You don't see people doing that shit elsewhere. No, this happens to people like myself or Contra or whoever's streaming that time. Fuck, probably Cat Black. I haven't checked out her streams. I'm just saying that in the end, like, the idea that, like, what you think is fair is the way the way, way fairness works, or that the world is fair, these are both fallacious thinking. And they're both ways that can hurt you from being able to feel empathy for others around you. This is, like, the clear libertarian error. The idea that, like, if you just work hard, you know, the market will take care of you or people will be fine. The reality is that's not the case. These systems are made to gain profit and to try to create damage. What's that? And I think it really does cut us off from, right, if you are... um somebody like in a field working with other people like no you're going to deal with other folks who have different learning styles different learning abilities and if you can figure out how to work with that person how to put them in a position where like they're, they're doing really good they're happy they can succeed like i think that's the best thing right then you have a really great connection with that person you've got someone doing something really fulfilling um and you know, you're also letting them do the best work that they can but if you're not willing or able to look at at um you know and work with those people right you do kind of cut yourself off so yeah so i think that's about it for this one for right now i think i, I think i feel pretty good on it i just wanted to make it really clear that like the fairness the, the, the belief that we're that things are fair or the belief that the world is fair i think cuts us off like xena said and i think it cuts us off from being able to get in get to, to touch in with people and understand how really how they're struggling and the biggest effect this has is I feel like it's directly the first step in dehumanization. I think this is the thing that people do by assuming that, like, with trans people, for example, all those assholes who came in and raided earlier, like, I'm not going to lose any sleep over those assholes, but the fact is, is, like, the reason they felt necessary to do that, why they felt they needed to do that, was because they think that, on the best case, they think I'm some threat to Western society, and on the worst case, they're just bigots. And the thing is, is that for their perspective, this is not, hey, you're a marginalized group that gets fucked over. To them, I'm a man in makeup that is doing this to myself, and I should be punished for stepping out of line. By having this idea of fairness in the world, then the people who get fucked over by the world, you can blame them for it. It's just victim blame. Make sense? No, I agree, Ash. They do need something more productive. I would look at SCP wikis. Yeah, I do. The Green Kachik said people think they're being empathetic when they assume other people are fundamentally like themselves, but that can lead to this kind of blindness to the other people's lived experience, if not tempered with actual listening. Word. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. So, um, I think that covers everything. So, yeah, I think so. With all that said, um, please like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the bell, as per usual. If and you've got other thoughts after watching this video and you've been watching it later, comment for us. We really do read them and like to see them. Yeah, and then um, the other thing is, if you want to donate, um, you can donate to streamlabs.com slash transgirltherapist slash tip. You also can become a patron, patreon.com slash transgirltherapist. We appreciate all of it. We're currently raising money to buy a new camera, which will make us look way better and me less grainy right now. So if you want me to look better... Maybe me. Dean as well. Be more hair color. New, new camera. Yeah. So please donate. We really appreciate it. And um, yeah, thank you so much. And we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.